best possible function of an orchestra is conveying that a tiny part of society or reflecting that tiny part of society in which all members of an orchestra, uh, managers, conductor, and musicians uh, perfectly understand one another. And this is not utopia. I believe it can be achieved. Four years ago, I joined, I joined uh, the London Symphonic Orchestra. It actually works under uh, the form of a, a cooperative association. They have hired Clive Gillingson as a manager. Actually, he runs the Carnegie Hall now. Well, they recruited him, obviously. He took it. He uh, crossed, took a leap across the ocean and uh, also, uh, at that time, Richard McNichol, who was in charge of our discovery program, was recruited by the Berlin Philharmonic Orchestra. And I'm only mentioning this to give you a flavor of what learning and evolution means in an orchestra. And uh, the way uh, you can plan for a future, people uh, evolve and go away, and freelancers are an example of uh, ideal human resource because uh, they're out there to help forward uh, or help evolve a slightly dated orchestra model. We keep complaining and have been doing so for a while that we don't, that our audiences are thinning down, that we're not profitable. We complain about education, social integration. We don't find the we fail to find the best way to integrate, in most cases, not all. So we need to satisfactorily look for a good a form of integration. And LinkUp is a great example of uh, integration into a structure in such a big country as the United States. And it's a network that benefits all. And just as AOS could profit from the experiences of others or from people who have attended one of these programs, I would say we can also uh, mimic their results in social uh, integration. Efforts of such institutes like Carnegie Hall or Berlin or London or the Venezuelan orchestra system. Thirteen years ago, as I said, I joined the London Orchestra. It's an inverted pyramid structure in which musicians, which are actually shareholders, rule the orchestra. It, it is self-managed. In other words, we do hire a manager. We hire the entire management team through a process uh, or the criteria is picking people from a similar environment with enough experience to, uh, to manage us. And self-management is not only a right, it's a responsibility of all orchestra members. And therefore, monitoring the good management of the orchestra and maintaining a high music standard is our guarantee for uh, the orchestra survival, in this case, the London Symphony. And to paraphrase uh, Professor Flanagan, I would say that, well, in our case, uh, public financing is 27 percent, private financing 33 percent, and our production performance based is 40 percent. Obviously, there is a commercial work here. Uh, we all try to work smart in uh, our programming to uh, knock on doors of, on the doors of certain institutions. Perhaps in Spain, institutions have been distanced from uh, the working class. Well, music tickets are, advi uh, are acquired by the higher classes because they're highly priced. So the problems we face will only be solved 
if we uh, change our programming, uh, if we deploy social and integration programs to uh, uh, create, to grow a future audience. Obviously, in times of crisis, in a negative, negative climate, as the one we're going through, it's complicated to grow an audience. But we need to change our programming in accordance with orchestra needs and the type of audience we want to capture. Well, obviously, our commercial work also involves uh, recording Star Wars or Harry Potter or playing in the opening and closure ceremonies for the Olympic Games or perhaps touring in the, to the Lincoln Center with Gurdjieff to uh, do a Stravinsky concert to which actually Antonio Muñoz Molina attended a few years ago. I was there. And uh, it is also important how uh, the orchestra is perceived, because we project ourselves outwards, not only through our programming, but also through good management and internal communication. And since I've been invited to talk about integration, I would very much like to uh, insist upon that uh, single unit an orchestra is, management uh, and, and musicians. Unless there is transparency, an orchestra will not succeed. Managers and musicians need to exchange information in an effective way, and we can use coaching or whatever we need. After all, there are plenty of tools that can guarantee the, that an orchestra be a single unit. We cannot see managers as the enemy, and managers cannot see uh, musicians uh, as uh, lazy, for instance. Some elements lead us to think that we are, we're not doing our best sometimes, so discipline or being self-managed gives you the discipline not only to be efficient and efficacious, but also to be emotionally involved and uh, as a Spanish orchestras link to their audience, not only a current but also potential, uh, orchestras will survive. Well, I might sound apocalyptic here, but we're going through uh, seriously uncertain times for um, the survival, the very survival of many orchestras. Somehow, the uh, education system devised by the London Symphony Orchestra, the Discovery, is very similar to that uh, mentioned by our colleagues from Carnegie Hall. It's a system uh, deployed into a community like a family program. It reaches out to families. It, uh, families come to the auditorium with their children. Uh, they can play music, they can have performance workshops. Uh, we have workshops for people with special needs, and that's another point for integration. Uh, the risk of social marginalization arising from disabilities. That's kind of family or community activity. Somehow, shows an image of the orchestra that is later socially recognized so that orchestra manager, managers and society itself uh, eventually realize how important this institution is. Today, symphonic orchestras uh, are, are not of the essence for society. We, we play a repertoire, people walk out of the music hall happier, some happier, some not so happy, but 
We need to play a more fundamental role. When I, uh, in the discovery program, when I joined the orchestra, I did so because I was told that they did many other things beyond just playing music. So with another professor from the Edinburgh uh, University, we set up a project in Master of Bosnia, Bosnia uh, sponsored by UNESCO, Pavarotti, and Brian Eno. And in 1999, Buster was uh, a totally torn down city. Uh, one building was rebuilt to host uh, the conservatory, and we developed a creative workshop to uh, gather together uh, the new generations, damaged generations of different uh, uh, groups, uh, Croatians, uh, Serbians. Well, the only excluded group was the gypsies. They uh, didn't even have a space in a demolished city. But the program was successful, at least in the sense that uh, the children composed an opera uh, by uh, making different ideas compatible. And these were the heirs of uh, families that had killed one another. It was uh, a serious, a seriously injuring civil war. So if eight-year-olds or ten-year-olds uh, are not are no longer drawing flowers or trees at school, but children without legs or landmines. Uh, if these children have no drinking water, if they have to heat their classrooms with uh, wood fire, actually their classrooms are filled with smoke for that reason. So if they were willing to sink their energies into a single project to create uh, an environment of solidarity and generosity, how come we can't? And, well, I'm, I'm talking about integration here, and I believe uh, these concepts can be brought over to our own institutions. Why can we not understand this? Why do we not have shared objectives in our orchestras? And I'm speaking in generic terms here, of course. I obviously take everybody's good intentions for granted, but we need tools and we need vehicles to help our institutions uh, gain uh, coherence and performance. Let me go over to an entirely different point, because I don't want to insist on how discovery was uh, designed because it's very similar to the project we have already heard from our Carnegie Hall colleagues. Or actually, it's very similar to the orchestra system in Venezuela. In their case, I, I was lucky to be invited to the orchestra system along with my colleague and friend, Vicente Galasso. I went over as a teacher. I believe we were rehearsing uh, Mahler's Second Symphony, and uh, I spoke with Maestro Jose Antonio Abreu for. Uh, we had a very long conversation. Well, he's uh, totally a Renaissance man. He knows about everything. He can uh, come up with a solution for anything and everything. And. He succeeded in linking the orchestra to the Ministry of Social Affairs, not, not the Ministry of Education and Culture, the Ministry of Social Affairs. And this shows how important a music network can be, a network that includes both orchestras and conservatories and music schools. To build that uh, un unbreakable mesh that, in the end, serves all citizens the same. Well, 
In Spain, most of our funds come from the state, so we move in a, in a, a different ocean, so to speak. Well, obviously, one thing to insist on is, uh, one thing we need to strive for is building that education, that learning network to uh, help people understand music. As Antonio was saying yesterday, some pleasures take effort, some pleasures take learning. And from the pragmatic viewpoint, uh, Americans, Venezuelans, and uh, the British are champions of this idea because they have a, a very clear way of presenting very complex ideas. It might be a possibility for us. Perhaps we could adopt these uh, learning and social integration systems to perhaps uh, strive for uh, the survival of our orchestras. Also, one thing we don't have in Spain is uh, a close link between uh, the education system and our orchestras. Well, not only music education, but also a primary education. In uh, this country, we cannot boast about a surplus of music uh, education. In countries like Switzerland, it uh, uh, used a referendum to change their constitution with the objective of uh, strengthening their primary education. Things are very different. So why don't we do the same thing here? How could we demand that these things be done? It, it's, uh, we cannot just uh, adapt to this idea that a few uh, chosen live on the resources of the majority. We need to adopt these ideas and put them into practice. We all agree that learning is a, a fundamental part of the future. If we can connect that to orchestras, we would be uh, doing uh, our best in this case. Uh, the love of my life is Van Dart. And Van Dart uh, was born as a group uh, tending to uh, social matters. We started off with Lisarco. Uh, it's uh, a ballet that uh, dared couple a whole heroic symphony with a ballet performed by people with Down syndrome. And that was emotionally intense for uh, those uh, who attended. We've, we have even been sent to jail. We have, well, actually, we have played in prison. And the last time we went there and, uh, to a penitentiary center, we went over with a Spanish performing call, performer called Wyoming, and we played together there. Because how often do you see a symphonic orchestra going to a, a high security uh, penitentiary uh, facility. And actually, uh, they, they also saw us as an orchestra without a conductor, which is not a frequent sight in Spain. And to leave room for possible questions from the audience and maybe comments, I will close by relating my experience as a teacher. In artistic terms, I am very concerned about a trend in all the countries represented here, a trend to, uh, to make a performances uh, a mechanically perfect and emotionally void. In Miami, for instance, I went to see the New World Symphony Orchestra, one of the most important academies supplying musicians for uh, symphony orchestras. And I discovered that uh, this is, I realized this is a, a global trend. It, uh, the choice is uh, based on virtuosity rather uh, than emotional performance. In the end, an orchestra 
as Pierre Bulesque uh, put it, is a set of emotion. And I would, uh, I would find this trend a lot more interesting if students understood the rhetorics of things. As a matter of fact, uh, postgraduate students from many uh, orchestras have asked what that meant, music, uh, rhetorics, and only 1% of them were well informed. That's a bit concerned for me, but perhaps it's another uh, pending subject we have to take care of. And to close, those representing 80% of um, professional musicians in Spain should attend these conferences because they, they are an important part of our system and we need all concerned parties to cooperate, to work together to uh, bring these institutions we all love into a brighter future. I believe that most of us are here uh, because we love the business, we love music, and we have the opportunity to prove our love in difficult times. And I hope and wish that we will. Thank you.